Okay. Okay, so the temperature of our water is... 100 degrees Celsius. And it doesn't change because... It hasn't, it's a phase change currently, and it hasn't changed in, completely into a gas. Okay, so during a phase change, temperature doesn't change. Why? Because all the energy oh, is being used to, to complete the phase change. Exactly. All energy added to a phase changing system is going to the phase change. It's not going to change the temperature. So, uh, the water in the tea kettle, when it's at a rolling boil, is about 100.0 degrees Celsius, we're assuming. Um, and, uh, how about the heating element in the tea kettle? Lily, what do you think? What's the temperature of the heating element? 100 exactly or hotter? It'll have to be hotter. It is probably hotter. I mean, it could do the job at 100 flat because eventually it would heat all the water, but it is hotter. The heating element is like ceramic and it gets hotter. So if I put our unknown metal in there and I set it right on the heating element, would it draw um, its eventual temperature from that 100 degree water or from the hotter heating element? It might get hotter than 100 degrees if it sat right on that hot heating element because metal absorbs heat very quickly, right? Uh, so I'm going to just put that silicone buffer in there so that it's only touching the water, not touching the heating element. Um, that's a source of error that can definitely affect the results of our lab if we don't protect the metal from something hotter than the water that we're really assuming. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop our metal uh, that is an unknown, which probably you all know what this is anyway, but, you know, uh, we're calling it our unknown metal. We're going to drop it into the 100 degree water, and that metal will come to 100 degrees Celsius, right? Uh, so what we need to do is gather our uh, data. So look at your data sheet. First thing is probably mass of the metal, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you three of your lab group. Uh, oh, and everyone will make goggles. So if you want to, saw so can you grab the thing and pass them out. And then pass your scale down to them as soon as you've measured uh, the mass of your metal. Here we go. Oh wait, I want to keep these metal samples in order though, so two, three, four, one, so maybe I can... Okay, so uh, use your scale to find the mass of the metal and write it down, make sure you keep this. You don't have to quite put them on yet, you put on your goggles when I start walking around with boiling water. Even if you're wearing glasses too. Yes. Okay. I will put them on. Is there a pair for me? I don't want to hear the thing. Keep holding the boiling water. Seven or eight. Wait, get up. Let's all touch the table. Oh, here. Oh, that's the scale. Jen, oh. can you shoot a video of actually doing that? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I can't get it to work. That was just error for getting the remove scale. Right. So don't start it on there until it's on. <laughs> and then, here, she'll film and you guys can act. And there we go. Okay, so Hopefully the Sharpie will stay on so you get the same sample back that you had before. All right, so record your mass and then we'll pass the scale down. So should we use all those significant things? Yes, that's why I use the good scale. Ooh, the on-off button is locked up. Hold on, try that again. Make sure you put a unit. What unit are you recording for the mass? For a metric, so... 111. They're all pretty close, so if it does come on Sharpie, it will be pretty close if you all get switched. So they're all between like 111, 112 grams. 
make sure you have five significant figures because those go out to the hundredths, please. Okay, so now our calorimeters here. Uh, everyone will need to record the empty calorimeters mass. That means the two cups and a lid. Ooh, let me give you a different lid because this is going to have a hole in it. We don't have to carve a hole in your lid. It could be two cups and a lid, and they'll pass you the scale. And then record the calorimeters mass. Everybody recorded the mass of your metal before I get it wet, because what metal, you know, right? Not easy to find the actual mass of. So you guys measure this? Definitely wrote down the mass of your metal, everybody. Oh. Right. So make sure it's teared, and then to actually film this, watch. So when you use the scale, if the calorimeter is kind of hanging and lopping up here, it's giving some of its weight that's not actually being recorded on the scale. So make sure that it's really, really all the way touching nothing but the sense pad, sensor pad. All right, so you guys find your mass. Have you weighed your calorimeter? Weighed. Found the mass on And you guys it. Good. Okay. So make sure it's teared. Okay. So now we will put some water. This is distilled water. Put some water in the calorimeter. I don't want to get any on the outside because remember our source of error if there's water like lopping all over the place, then it's not really gaining heat, it is. So I'm filling, <laughs> yeah, the water is really contaminated. There's dust. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what you wanna do once your water's in is you're gonna get the mass again. Um, then you can find the mass of just the water using the difference, subtracting out the mass of the calorimeter. But make sure you put your lid on, or you won't know the difference. Seven, And make sure it's not like resting its weight somewhere that it should be. And make sure it's tear before you take the measurement. Oh good, the sharpie's not coming off. It's like not giving a correct number. Okay, pick it up. I think if you just added them together. Or it might weigh too much. Uh, 
Anyone else have in trouble, perhaps, that's exceeded um, the ability of the oh. calorie uh, to measure the okay. cancer? Okay, 88. Let's just call it 88. <laughs> 132.88. Yeah, it just has to be sub 200 grams. Mm -hmm. Never had that happen before. So, see the hole in your calorimeter lid? Go ahead and stick a thermometer in there. And while it's acclimating, we'll kind of start on the lab report. Um, making sure that we talk about all the pieces of the lab report um, and exactly what we've done. Because we haven't exactly done a great job of keeping up writing the procedure while we're doing it, which is really ideal what you should be doing. Um, can't find a way to stand it up. Um, so, first, what do you think our objective is? What's our goal for today? I've got these unknown chunks of metal that I'm heating up. Uh, we have calorimeters that contain some water. So, since you've done some calorimetry problems, what do you think we're trying to do here? Uh, get everything to the same temperature? That's always the goal of calorimetry, is to get the calorimeter, the water, and the unknown chunk of metal to the same temperature. And then, Lily, once we do that, what do you think we'll know? Uh, the specific heat of the metal and then the identity of the metal. Exactly. So she just said a whole bunch of stuff. So our goal is to find the specific heat of the metal. So if we're writing an objective on our lab report, which Maybe if you take the back of your note sheet or a piece of paper um, and you want to write an objective, what would our, our whole goal today be? So we have an objective. We want to know the specific heat of our unknown metal. Now, Lily, why did you tell us that if we know the specific heat of the metal, we might be able to identify the metal? Because uh, certain substances have a certain specific heat, so right. you can match it up. So if those things are made of copper, then we're going to find their specific heat to be about 0 0.39 joules per gram degree Celsius, because copper always has that specific heat. Just like copper always has the density of like 8.91 grams per milliliter. 
because dens uh, density and specific heat are intrinsic properties. Um, if it's zinc, it'll also have a specific heat of 0 0.39, so that can be tricky. You couldn't use calorimetry to find the specific heat of new and old pennies and tell them apart because coincidentally, uh, zinc and copper essentially have a very similar specific heat. Um, if you had a really good calorimeter, you could probably find the tiny difference, but we couldn't do that. We don't have enough significant figures to tell the difference. But it's not copper and it's not zinc. Uh, we can also use other clues to tell the difference, right? If we found that it had that density and that specific heat, we could easily tell the difference between copper and zinc because they're different colors. <laughs> really obvious. Um, so when you use all the information you can gather, you can usually identify metal particularly. Um, if we found the density of that metal, you pretty well know what it was immediately. Um, using lots of information altogether, we can almost always identify an unknown. And there are lots of other things you can find too. So as we write the procedure, what have we done so far? What was the very first thing? We weighed the metal that we were going to put in the calendar. So how would I say? The metal was weighed. Or, well, since we really found the mass, I mean, yes, we kind of weighed it. of the calorimeter was found. to the calendar first? Yes. of the water, you don't have to say by difference or whatever, because that will show in your calculations. Um, so the point here is that you found the mass of the water. Has everyone actually found the mass of the water by subtracting the mass of the calorimeter from your total? Yes. And recorded it on your data sheet? Yes. Okay. So we've got calorimeter, mass, water. Um, okay, then what? Okay, and we'll just go for the water temperature was recorded. No, we're going to do that in a minute because we want it to definitely make sure we've come to room temperature and the water and the calorimeter have acclimated because they have to start this experiment at the same temperature. But that's kind of... Alright, so what am I doing over here? Trying to boil water with the really am. What is the problem with trying to boil water with this glass? Alright, I'm going to give it two more minutes and I really will have to get the propane tank out of Let's hope. It's going to happen. <laughs> Water was boiled and unknown metal was heated in it. That's our next. That's what we're doing next. Okay, so as we wait still, 
Um, what is kind of our next goal, do you think? Austin, tell me what will hopefully happen next as long as I don't spill or drop anything. Right, so I'm going to take this hopefully heated to 100 degrees Celsius metal. I'm going to do what with it? The boiler is trying to find the temperature of the metal. We know if it's in boiling water, which is 100, 100 degrees Celsius, Celsius, the metal will be 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, so then when I stick the hot metal into the calorimeter, here's where some slick lab action needs to happen, guys. So uh, just technique wise, I'm going to come around with my hot metal. I seriously hope. Jen, is that recording? Can you run out to the car and find in the back seat, like the way back, all the pieces of the burner? Because we're going to have to heat it the old fashioned way here. Tea kettle is not working. Um, well, it's fine. Just leave it. Next time.